as they experience the world, they will actually form memories of the world. They'll reflect on these memories and that will inform their future behavior. Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about an extremely exciting project from Google and Stanford, bringing together artificial intelligence and video games, making sandbox environments absolutely come to life in what potentially could be the future of how video games behave. With this project, there's the promise of actually being able to give NPCs an entire life and allowing them to live their own life in a world that they create. I'm really excited to show you this. Let's get into it. So here's the paper. It's called Generative Agents, Interactive Simulacra of Human Behavior. And I actually had to look up what that word meant. It means uh, an image or representation of something else. And what this paper does is put together an architecture for creating generative agents, basically, characters that you can put in a game, and it's much more than that, but I'm gonna simplify it. Characters that you can put in a game and allow them to live their lives with very little input from the user. And they go and they interact with their world, they interact with other characters completely on their own. And this is using ChatGPT, of course. So the researchers gave these generative agents about a paragraph of text to describe what they are, who they are, and from that, they're able to live their lives. And here's a couple examples. Generative agents wake up, cook breakfast, and head to work. Artists paint while authors write. They form opinions, notice each other, and initiate conversations. They remember and reflect on days past as they plan the next day. Now, that last part is super interesting. As they experience the world, they will actually form memories of the world. They'll reflect on these memories, and that will inform their future behavior. So again, no longer are we gonna have static NPCs. These are NPCs that are gonna interact and understand and learn from their world and change their behavior based on that. It is so, so cool. Here it says, they store a complete record of the agent's experiences using natural language, synthesize those memories over time into higher level reflections and retrieve them dynamically to plan behavior. I mean, really, really cool. You can imagine how video games are gonna be influenced by this paper in the future. So this game was inspired by The Sims, but it looks really akin to RimWorld in terms of design. They may have actually used RimWorld to build the sandbox game. So the first example this paper talks about is a Valentine's Day party. And all they said to one of the agents was, hey, you're gonna have a Valentine's Day party. And from that, let's read what it says. The agents autonomously spread invitations to the party over the next two days, making new acquaintances, asking each other out on dates to the party and coordinating to show up for the party together at the right time. Again, all of this was based on a very simple push of, hey, you're gonna have a Valentine's Day party. So let's talk about a few other things I found in this paper that were super interesting to me. I'll link the paper down below in the description. The agents act consistently with their past experiences and react believably to their environments. Again, we haven't really seen that in video games ever. Maybe The Sims, but this is like The Sims on steroids. And through all these interactions in game, emergent social phenomena occurs. So here it says, constantly growing memories as new interactions, conflicts, and events arise and fade over time, while handling cascading social dynamics that unfold between multiple agents. Success requires an approach that can retrieve relevant events and interactions over a long period, reflect on those memories to generalize and draw higher level inferences, and apply that reasoning to create plans and reactions that both make sense in the moment and in the longer term arc of that agent's behavior. And of course, I'm talking about this through the lens of video games because I'm personally very excited about that application. But they mention a few other applications which I think are notable. One application they talk about is social role play scenarios, or for an example, interview preparation, where somebody can rehearse safely a very difficult and conflict-related conversation. And another way generative agents can be used is with social platform prototyping. So before a new social platform goes live, you can release a bunch of these generative agents, let them interact with each other, test the edges, test the bounds of that social platform before actually releasing it to the public, the humans. And 
you can test all of the negative things that could possibly happen within that platform. So here's the little town that they created. It's called Smallville. It's a sandbox world. They have a park, co-living space, bar, cafe, basically all the things that you would expect in a little town. And within a house, they have a bathroom, kitchen, common room, bedrooms, garden, etc. And agents, generative agents in this world understand all of these different things that are available to them within this world. A community of 25 agents inhabit Smallville. Each agent is represented by a simple sprite avatar. We authored one paragraph of natural language description to depict each agent's identity, including their occupation and relationship with other agents as seed memories. So they start out with just one paragraph, one paragraph to give them that seed of inspiration, that seed of memory. And from that, they build their entire personality and their entire life. So let's read about John Lynn. John Lynn is a pharmacy shopkeeper at the Willow Market and Pharmacy who loves to help people. He is always looking for ways to make the process of getting medication easier for his customers. He lives with his wife, who is a college professor, his son, who's a student. He loves his family. He knows the couple next door for a few years. He thinks the man next door is very kind. He knows his neighbor. They like to discuss local politics together. So, and so it's really setting up the interactions between the generative agents. So agents communicate with each other in natural language, just like anybody in the real world would. Here's an example of what a segment of the conversation looks like. So Isabella is talking to Tom about the upcoming election. Isabella says, I'm weighing my options, but I've been discussing the election with Sam Moore. What are your thoughts on him? Tom, to be honest, I don't like Sam Moore. I think he's out of touch with the community and doesn't have our best interests at heart. Again, these are just conversations between two generative agents living in this open video game world. And the user, the person sitting behind the computer can actually control the world in a couple ways. And I find this really, really interesting. And so here it says the user can control the world in two ways. A user running the simulation can steer the simulation and intervene either by communicating with the agent through conversation or by issuing a directive to an agent in the form of an inner voice. So you can actually become the inner voice of one of these agents and say, hey, I'm inspired to paint a picture today. And then all of a sudden, just with that little prompt of the inner voice, that agent is going to do what it needs to do to actually get to that outcome of painting a picture. As these generative agents live in the world, they actually start to develop their own routine. So here's an example of that. A morning routine can be wake up, brush teeth, take a shower, have a breakfast, then catching up with friends, packing, and then beginning work. And all on a very rigorous time schedule. This graph really defines what the architecture is to make this happen. First, they perceive something, something in the world. And next they have a memory stream. You can think about it as all the things that are happening to them in the world get logged to that memory stream. They retrieve that memory stream as retrieved memories and they either plan and or reflect on those memories to act next, to perform their next action and decide what their next action should be. And so in this graph, you can see the memory stream. So it's logged by time and it talks about what specifically they're doing. So desk is idle, bed is idle, Isabella Rodriguez is cleaning up the kitchen, et cetera, et cetera. And so based on this memory stream, we can ask a question to Isabella. What are you looking forward to the most right now? Isabella Rodriguez is excited to be planning a Valentine's Day party at Hobbs Cafe on February 14th from 5 p.m. and is eager to invite everyone to attend the party. So here they have the actual algorithm for deciding what's next. They have recency, importance, and relevance as weights. And so in this graph, they're showing how Isabella, who was given a task of, hey, plan a Valentine's Day party, was able to actually form relationships with other generative agents in the world, tell them about it, and those agents told other people about it. So here it is. I'm planning a Valentine's Day party. That's Isabella. Isabella told Tom, Latoya, Wolfgang, Klaus, John, etc. And then Sam, for example, told Jennifer. So there was actually two degrees of removal. Isabella told Sam, Sam told Jennifer, and they coordinated to actually show up to the party together. So I invite you to please take a look at this paper. It is fascinating. And before we end the video, you can actually demo this game. So let's take a look. So here's the game. 
It's reverie.herokuapp.com slash A-R-X-I-V underscore demo. And I'll drop the link in the description below. So I pause it, but I'll push play now. So one thing to note is this is not actually live. This is a pre-recording that's playing out, but this did actually happen in this generative world. And so you can see the characters moving around, and this is just one section of the world as well. And so you can see all the different characters here. So if I click on one, it's gonna scroll up and it's gonna show me where they are. And if I scroll to the bottom, it's gonna tell me about them. So this is Francisco Lopez. His current action is having lunch, gives the location, and he's not in a conversation. Let's look for somebody else. Here's Sam Moore. And here's the current conversation Sam is having with Latoya. And there he is, Sam Moore walking around. And again, completely based on artificial intelligence. All 25 of these generative agents are living their life within this world. Now you can start to really imagine how powerful this can be in a game like The Sims or a game like RimWorld or even like Skyrim or GTA. These games are populated with NPCs with static and sometimes boring dialogue that just stand there waiting for you to interact with them. But now with artificial intelligence, you can give them entire lives and they will go on and the game will be completely dynamic completely based on not only what you're doing in the game, but also what all of these other generative agents are doing in the game. Very, very cool. So check out this game, leave a comment below, let me know what you think. And if you like this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.